Hello and welcome to episode 9 of This Week in Linux. Today is Tuesday, February 2nd, 2010. In the true Groundhog Day spirit, I'm going to mention an article from apcmag.com. This article says that between December of 2008 and January of 2010, 75% of the Linux kernel commits were done by paid Linux developers. While I'm not a Linux contributor yet, this is definitely a good sign for Linux developers because if you want to be a part of the Linux kernel development team, there's a much better chance you're going to get paid for doing it now. This will hopefully signal a whole lot more hardware support from third-party vendors as well. The companies topping the list with the most Linux kernel developers were Red Hat, IBM, Intel, Oracle, and Novell. I know in Episode 8 I said that that was going to be the last Ubuntu news for a little while, but something came up between then and now that I just have to talk about. In version 10.04, they've said that Ubuntu is going to be changing the default search provider for Firefox from Google to Yahoo. Well, I'm not a fan of using Yahoo for search, the idea that Ubuntu is going to be paid for featuring the Yahoo search engine is great in my opinion. There are a lot of people that are against it, but I seem to think it's a good idea because the more outside companies we can have that will support Linux and will support Ubuntu, the, the better chance that more things will move toward the Linux side. The Linux Foundation announced a few days ago that they're going to be offering some free webinars for Linux system administrators and people new to Linux. These webinars will be held starting on March 1st. Some of the webinars include an introduction to Git, Linux system troubleshooting and tuning, uh, system administration, how to work with the Linux community, uh, file system differences, BTRFS and intro and update, and performance tuning for Linux. If you'd like to sign up for any of these webinars, I'll put a link in the sidebar. And of course, the big news is Nokia is releasing a Linux-based smartphone phone called the Nokia N900. I've got a couple of friends that have the N810 and the N800, and it's not exactly a phone, but it's a tablet-based device. It's, it's about this big, and it runs a whole suite of applications. It's got a front-facing camera. The N900 is a lot like that, but better in just about every way. In fact, it actually surpasses the iPhone in a lot of ways. It comes with built-in 16 gigs of flash memory, upgradable to 32 gigs using a micro SD flash card. It's got a total memory of 256 megabytes, which becomes a gigabyte when you add in all the virtual memory. It has a slide-out keyboard, a front-facing camera, a little stand that you can stand it up on in case you want to watch movies. It has a GPS. It has a 5 megapixel digital camera. It takes widescreen movies in 800 by 480 format. It'll play back a ton of different formats, including the H.264 codecs, the MPEG-4, XVID, a whole bunch of different video and audio codecs available. It also comes with a TV out with all the cables. It's got a ton of available applications. It's got a bunch of great features on it. The browser also comes with Flash built-in, which is amazing. That's a huge step forward over iPhone. One more thing about the N900. Someone posted a video on YouTube dual booting the Memo Linux that comes on it with Google's Android operating system. If they can make the N900 work with Android, that just gives you a whole bunch more options for one single device. And like I said before, this completely blows the iPhone out of the water. It is available from the Nokia website for $569, unlocked, meaning you can put it on just about any network. That's about all I can say about the N900 without owning one. Well, that's all for this episode of This Week in Linux. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.